Okay, so that's sort of the um, current landscape, what we're seeing now. So what changes and trends are we seeing? Well, we, we're, we're really uh, seeing uh, this personalized medicine or targeted therapy uh, really uh, explode. And uh, the leading edge is the cancer therapeutics, of course, because you can identify mutations that are supporting the cancer, the behavior of the cell, uh, and you can target those mutations. But we also have the genetic diseases, and they also, you can, they have, of course, genetic mutations that can be targeted. Now, what we've learned, though, is that, okay, we have a single gene, it might be targeted, but it, the gene, the cystic fibrosis gene, for example, has at least 150 mutations that can result in the phenotype of cystic fibrosis. And a long time ago, nobody knew why that phenotype was so variable from extremely severe to much less severe. And it turns out it's because of where the mutation is and the consequences of that mutation to the transporter protein. So um, we now have drugs that are targeted to those mutations. And some people told us, and some people internally said, well, you have to study every mutation separately in a trial like it was a disease. And I'm there, that's not going to work. <laughs> so other people suggested, well, we can lump mutations based on functional or other structure or other conclusions that the, tar that the targeted therapy will interact with that group grouping in a certain way. And we went along with that. And um, so we've issued a draft guidance in 2017. It's down here at the bottom. And what it says is if you can have plausible grouping, say, by functional in vitro assays of the interaction of the intervention, the drug with the target, you can group, then you can design a trial with that grouping. Um, if, you, if the trial is successful or the development program, then even the mutations that weren't even enrolled in the trial, we're going to put in the label.